I am Detroit. I am a river and a spirit, a reality and a promise. I am yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Glaciers of the past carved my place on the straits between the greatest inland seas in the world. Before George Washington was born, I was a military outpost guarding the entranceway to mid-America. So ideal is my location that for a hundred years, French, Indian, English, and Americans died to possess me. In 1812, Admiral Perry met the British on the waters at my front door, and after the battle sent word, we have met the enemy, and they are ours. And I became an American city. <laughs> Vital, energetic, optimistic. I am a city that has made and remade its own future for the past 250 years. A city whose pleasant climate, ideal location, and unique human resources guarantee ongoing growth and progress. I am an ocean port, third largest in the U.S., with the world's busiest waterway flowing between me and the friendly city of Windsor, Canada. I am a marshalling yard for railroads knitting together the industrial east and the agricultural west. I am a trucking headquarters and a headquarters for building trucks, producing more than any city in the world. My airport provides closely scheduled direct flights to every major city on Earth. I am a leader in the production of drugs, chemicals, steel, and iron. There are more meat packers within my city limits than in Chicago. I am the fourth largest financial center in America. I am the home of the world's largest design center and the world's largest architectural and engineering firm. I care about Detroit families. I am their 4,000 acres of parks. I am their 29 public libraries and 88 hospitals. I am 48 banks with $10 billion in assets. I'm the home of some of the world's finest universities, like Wayne State, the University of Detroit, and the University of Michigan Extension. Branching out from my main arteries, you'll find miles and miles of tree-lined streets. Symbolic of a people deeply rooted in the pride of home ownership.
Detroiters have the highest percentage of home ownership in the world. Their average income is 27% above the national average. As workers, they boast the highest productivity per hour of any people on Earth. Since the turn of the century, I have put the nation and the world on wheels. I have changed the face of this land and churned out the hardware that preserved the country through two world wars. In the Second World War, Ford made everything from bolts to bombers. Chrysler turned out tanks and guns and bullets and boats. General Motors was an army all by itself. American Motors contributed when its name was Nash and Calvinator. When America needed mass-produced airplanes, it called on Henry Ford. When industry was asked to step up its output, Knudsen of General Motors got the job done. When production plans for the atomic bomb project bogged down, Keller of Chrysler solved the problem. Chrysler rocketry got the space age off the ground. Ford put Mission Control Center on the ground at Houston. Today, astronauts drive on the moon in a vehicle powered by GM. Does a customer in Spokane want a car like this? A sporty red two-door fastback hardtop with stereo, four on the floor, four-barrel carburetor, bucket seats, air conditioning, racing trim, and wire wheels? I give it to him. A computer sends out the order and in any one of a hundred assembly plants controlled from Detroit, that car comes together. That stereo, that body. That engine, that transmission, those seats and wheels and wheel covers. The modern way to make a custom automobile. America rides on cars in more ways than one. Cars are steel. Cars are rubber. Cars are fabric. Oil. Gas. Aluminum. Tourism. Drive-ins. Motels. Highway construction. Sell Detroit and you sell America. Buy Detroit, and you buy America. But do I eat and drink and sleep only cars? Hardly. For example, when you eat here, you may find yourself high above Detroit at the top of a plane, or right across the sky at the Pontchartrain, where Detroit's French heritage is translated into gourmet dining at the Café La Méditerranée. Try the famous London Chop House or Le Bordeaux. How about the Caucus Club? Sound relaxing? Relaxation is a big thing to a city that works as hard as I do. In the memory of almost every native Detroiter is the magic of a cruise to Bablo Island. The van plays, the breeze blows, and an amusement park waits on an island among the waves. Or you can travel through waves of nostalgia and find more memories at historic Greenfield Village, where yesterday is a word you can walk through. If music is your kind of relaxation, there's the Detroit Symphony one of the world's outstanding orchestras. Or you can take your music among the scenic surroundings of Meadowbrook, where you'll enjoy everything from ballet under the stars to blues in the night. In fact, for almost any kind of pleasure, I'm free anytime you are. Feel free to stop by Verner's for a Verner's. 
visit the Stroh's Brewery and perhaps sample the product. Watch some cars go together. Take in a flick at the public library or take out some books. Tour a TV station or newspaper. Museums. Detroit has the Art Museum, the Dawson Great Lakes, Fort Wayne, Children's, the Historical, and a free money museum at National Bank of Detroit. How about a concert, flower show, the aquarium? A splash in the river, a trip to the zoo. Like sports? These are my lions. My tigers. My pistons. My red wings. My gold cup boats. Or you can play in your own backyard. And in Michigan, your backyard includes hundreds of nearby lakes. And a mountain of fun in the wintertime. Sound perfect? No city in the world today is perfect. But unlike many urban areas that have problems, I have solutions. A rebuilding program that puts new growth onto old ground. Whether through low-cost, publicly funded housing like this, or privately financed glamour areas like this, but anything worthwhile represents not only an investment in money, but in hard work. I am a city that has never been afraid of taking on a hard job. A city that can take off its gloves and roll up its sleeves. A place that understands tools and how to use them. In the past three years, more than $300 million have gone into new construction in my downtown area. To spur on this rebirth, on November 20th, 1970, a group of Detroit's top businessmen, under the chairmanship of Max Fisher, Henry Ford II, and Robert Surdam, got together and formed Detroit Renaissance. Working with Detroit's Mayor Roman Gribbs, they are pledged to seek out investment opportunities in Detroit, spur construction, cut red tape, and help businessmen utilize the unique benefits this city affords. These new buildings, $300 million worth, erected by some of Detroit's and the world's leading companies, are the beginning of a new reality and a new promise for Detroit. I am Detroit. I know how to plan and build. I have enormous reservoirs of power and energy, an almost unlimited supply of water a skilled workforce without equal in the world.
I am the past, the present, but more importantly, the future. Ready to take on the tall orders of tomorrow. I am Detroit, ready to serve you.